Okay, let's get this party started. All right, welcome everybody. If we're watching this live, you're welcome to join us here on the Zoom meeting. The details are in the uh, in the announcement and in the event. And I just want to mention that we have a, uh, a great promotion going on here with that the Arsenal. Uh, great photo challenge. Just do a, a photo and submit it with the theme of flowers, Mayflowers, or flowing waters. And you've got until uh, next Sunday to submit that. Just put a hashtag of Arsenal in there and you could win. Uh, they're going to be giving away two of those. So it'll be good, and you can also get a discount on the purchase of one. So go ahead. It's a great challenge. The weather's starting to turn nice. It ought to be, ought to be good to try and, and get that going. So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to talk about, um, like we did last week with Nikon, we're going to talk about your, um, your camera explained, your, some of the, the details about how your camera um, not only works, but some of the things that your camera does that um, may be a mystery to you. And it's one of those things that we see all the time with uh, people that are have nice DSLRs and it's something that you just want to get out there and take pictures. There are so many controls, there are so many uh, menu choices and options, and some of them, quite honestly, are not clear. Uh, there, there's, it, it's, it's a shame how unclear they are and it doesn't matter what company you're talking from, Canon, Nikon, Sony, Fuji, Olympus, different people like them for different reasons, but none of the menus are very clear. So one of the things that we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at the controls, some controls, a lot of the controls that you use all the time, we're not going to spend much time on at all. What I want to look at is some of the controls that may be confusing or some hidden things that you can do with them that actually may help you with your photography. So we're going to take a look at some of the controls on a Canon. I have here, thanks to my son-in-law, I have here a beautiful Canon 60D. It's a relatively older camera, but it has got a lot of functions that the same thing on the Nikon side that I use, the D5300, had has. And it's a mid-level DSLR. There are newer ones. A lot of the menus are the same. There will be more features on some of the newer um, cameras. However, a lot of these things that I'm going to be going over on the 60D, you'll also find on newer cameras. So uh, I'm sure you'll have more. If somebody wants to give me a, a 5D Mark III, I'd be happy to go through some of the hidden secrets there. But until then, uh, I'm going to use what I have, which is the, the 60D. So let me, uh, let me switch this bad boy on, and we're going to get this thing rolling. Make sure we can actually see the camera. So... This is going to be, all right, there's my keyboard. So nothing great there. What we're really going to look at is some of the menu options here. And we're going to see just what it takes to to be, um, to take control over some of these, some of these uh, camera functions. So one of the things I want to look at, and this, we're going to start out with some of the controls on the camera, and then we're going to go to some of the menu settings. One thing that I found is really helpful, and I mentioned this on the Nikon last week, the live view mode when you switch on the live view system on the back which is on usually this red button here that turns on the live view system on the camera let me go there there we go okay so there's the live view system all right and that would normally be showing up on the back of the camera so with that let me show you that would normally be showing up here on the back of the camera However, um, it it allow because I'm I'm using this video to show you. This is the live view instead of using the viewfinder, looking through the eyepiece, which is much much better for stability, for reducing shake. Looking through the 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 viewfinder is going to give you much better control over your composition. However, you can use the live view for certain things, and there are some times where you get much better pictures using live view so if we look at if we go into some of the menus one of the things that 
that you'll find is real handy if you're using Live View is when you go into Live View and you, you hit autofocus, and I'm just going to focus on my keyboard here. If you hit autofocus, if it finds a lock and it turns that mark green, then you're going to see that it's found focus. But if you want to check that focus, you have to zoom in to see it. Well, there's a way to set up your um, set up the buttons on the back so that with a single press you can zoom in to that and check your autofocus and then even zoom in more okay and then if you try an autofocus now it will show you whether you're locked or not but you give get that uh, 5x and 10x zoom and that zooms right back out again We'll show you how to set that up. That is real handy, especially if you're on a tripod and you're trying to focus on something far away or you're trying to focus on the moon. And it's just usually it's so small you really can't see it. So with a quick touch and it's a quick touch of this upper corner. Where are we here? This upper corner button here. So let me go back to this. There we go. So it's this upper corner here, that upper right button. We're going to show you how to set that to do a quick auto zoom so that you can zoom right into whatever it is you're, you want to focus on. Okay, so when you're auto focusing, you hit that and it zooms in double. Okay, so let's go there. So we're going to go to the menu. <clears throat> and give me a second here. Let's switch over to the DSLR. This is fun trying to keep track of all of this. There we go. Okay, so in the shooting menu, when you get to live view, uh, let me find it here. Okay, live view shooting. So first of all, that needs to be enabled. Okay, so with that enabled, then that button will allow you to do live view looking at the image on the back. If you then come over here to the custom menu, okay, so we're going to look at this custom menu. And there are several options here we're going to look at, but first off, this there we go. Come on. Sometime there we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the image that we're looking at here, the autofocus drive. This is where you can set this, this custom function three autofocus drive. First off, this autofocus select button, that upper right hand corner, lets you choose the autofocus point you want, and you can override it by using the multi controller. Now, if we go to this option three, there we go. Let me find this silly thing here. There we go. Operations, others. There we are. Okay, so that live zoom seems to have disappeared. Come on, menu. There we go. Hey, live video, it's a fun thing. Okay, quality. I just saw it right before. <laughs> Did you ever have so much fun? Okay. Alrighty. Give me one moment here. We're going to look at some of these other things, but like I said, these, <laughs> these menus are not the friendliest things in the world. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's on by default then. Okay. So when you're in live view mode, if you hit that upper right hand corner, it will allow you to zoom in that double and that 5x and 10x zoom. Now, the lock button on the bottom of the camera. So this lock button down here, there's a lock button right here. I found I was wondering what that was and I had to look it up because this is one of the things that I used to do when I'd be holding this up to my face and, and trying to shoot. My cheek, if it brushed against this, the multi-controller here, this is just a, a this, this wheel can turn around or you can hit the set button. 
and <clears throat> it can change your settings. So that lock button, when you enable that, you hit the lock button and it ignores that uh, exposure changes on that wheel because when you're in say aperture priority mode and you use that wheel it, ch it can change your aperture you can tell it to uh, change the f-stop or not in shutter priority mode same thing you can use that dial or you can use the top dial to change your aperture but that lock button when you press it once it locks that out so that your cheek can't change it when you're turn when you're shooting it's a handy little function if you didn't know that it was there it's a good one to know the other one is this info display button and I might have to let me get back to the DSLR here we go so the info display button there we go so on the back there's this info this info button right here and when you press that it does multiple things and you can tell it what you want it to do when you're displaying that so if we're we have that info button I press it one time and it clears the display it shows the autofocus uh, the autofocus confirmation box but that's all it shows if I press that info button again it shows me the bottom of the screen and it shows me so that I can change my exposure, I can change my f-stop, I can change my ISO, whatever mode I'm on, if I'm in aperture priority mode, it will show me the details of what I'm changing right on that back screen, which is kind of handy. It also gives me the additional detail of what ISO I'm using and uh, whether I have exposure compensation on or not. Okay. So I press that a third time and I get additional settings displayed just so that I can visually check to see what's going on with those live, um, those icons. I'm shooting in raw, um, I'm shooting with automatic white balance, I'm in high, uh, high speed continuous, and I'm in the autofocus live mode with a neutral picture style setting, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So I press that info button again and that all goes away. You can tell the camera what things you want to display there when you go into the info button controls. So if I can find that, there we go. And that is in the shooting menu. I had these written down and for some reason they're not showing up. That's okay. I view shooting. <laughs> Gotta love it. Well, I lost that setting. I, you know, there are some of these settings that they don't show up when you're plugged in and, and spitting out the video. And I think there we go. Oops. It's under the tools button there we go so the info display you can right now I only have turned on that electronic level so that when I'm looking through the viewfinder if I hit that info button all you're going to get is that electronic level I don't have to cycle through three different things to find that I can turn these other ones on that display set, camera settings and the shooting functions but for viewing through the the, the viewfinder I, turn, I want only that electronic level turned on so that when I'm get out of here and I'm going to turn off the live view so I'm now shooting I'm now shooting through the viewfinder and when I shoot through the viewfinder and I press that quick or when I press that uh, info button now it pops up that it pops up in the viewfinder and there's now a, a level it's using the exposure uh, the exposure compensation, the metering uh, uh, brackets, the metering display, and it's showing me whether it's level or not. I can also, when I press the set button on the back, that turns on a level on the back viewfinder, depending on what mode I'm in. So you can, you can tell that to switch back to that info display button, that info option, so that I can turn on only the electronic level and it'll show me the electronic level only when I'm looking through the viewfinder. 
And when I press that info button, then it's going to pop up the, the um, leveling so that I can look at it on the back screen. Very, very handy. Okay. Let's go back to here. Okay. Yep. Click on the right screen. There we go. Okay. So now these are the options you can turn these things on or off depending on whether you want to have more and it will display that screen on the bottom i find that to be a little bit more distracting and it forces me to press it three times when i want to get to the electronic level so it's better to just have this alone selected so that that level is going to be displayed when you press that info button okay all right now some of these menus that i want to go into that are uh, can be a little mysterious and the first one that we're, we're going to talk about is image quality and when I do my classes for continuing education we check these settings because invariably people have got the image setting set to a non well not the best setting for their camera so we're going to look at the image quality and we're going to take a look at this right here okay so in the image setting, if I go here to the very first shooting menu, the, the three or four or five, depending on your camera, red icons on Canon are the shooting menus. And the shooting menu, um, the very first one, there's this quality. You highlight that and you press the set button and it brings it in here. Now, most of you, I expect, have been in here and you set it to either raw or medium raw or small raw if you select that leftmost button that will remove that minus button that will remove that raw setting and it will allow you to shoot jpeg only so when you are talking about shooting jpeg and raw you want it on that l with the smooth curve to it that large raw will give you the highest quality raw there's no compression applied all of your data will be there and you want the largest quality or largest and highest quality jpeg if you choose anything but that l with the smooth that furthest leftmost one before the minus sign if you choose anything but that then it's going to um it's going to give you a problem with applying too much compression to your JPEG. You want, if you're going to shoot JPEG, you want the highest quality JPEG you can get. So that's where you want to make sure that for your JPEG, you're on that large, smooth JPEG, that L. Um, and the other thing, notice here on the on the uh, on the display, you select the JPEG quality level using the left and right arrow buttons and you select the raw level using the command dial up on the top underneath your index finger. So you select raw and then you hit set and it chooses that small three. I don't want that. That'll give me much worse than a point and shoot camera. So I want this large and I want raw and now I hit set and it's locked that into raw plus large JPEG. Okay, hopefully that's clarified. Um, okay, the other thing you want to make sure that you're not doing, and I see this a lot of times with people that that are shooting with uh, a camera they may not be familiar with, or they just, they really aren't paying attention to the subject and they're more interested in what my picture look like, and that is image review. If you have image review on, it's really getting in your way, and that's this menu here this image review and that's where when you take a picture it flashes that image on the back screen in between every picture and it really does get in the way that's that old chimping uh, where you're looking at every single picture if you turn that off you can always hit the review button the play button down on the bottom and it will show you your picture but to have it interrupt your view or interrupt your viewing and shooting, so if you're taking multiple pictures, it's going to slow you down because it's going to try and throw up a picture in between each and every shot. Uh, that's going to slow things down, especially if you're trying to do sports or wildlife. So turn that off. Find out where your play button is so that on the very bottom here, down here, hit that play button, and you can go back and check your pictures after 
things have slowed down a little bit, but you don't, you shouldn't need to check every single picture and you don't need the camera forcing you to check that. Another side um, problem with this is if you're shooting in near dark or you're trying to shoot either stars or Milky Way and it's flashing up this image that you just took in any kind of low light, it's going to constantly be screwing up your eyes and your, your, your eyes aren't going to be adjusted to the light. So turn that off, look at your, review your pictures only when you really want to. That's a great setting to, to make sure you turn off because there's nothing worse than trying to get a shot and the camera is trying to display the picture while you're trying to just take another one. So turn that off, everything will go a little bit smoother. Now, Something that I, I prefer to use, but it is completely up to each photographer whether they want to use that or not, and that is this ISO, auto ISO. And this is where you can tell the camera what's the maximum ISO that you want to work with. In other words, let the camera raise the ISO when it needs when it when it's needs more exposure when you're either shooting with too fast a shutter speed or you want to close your lens down let it raise the iso but you have the choice to set the limit this and this what i highly recommend everybody do is take your camera and take the same shot outside with your different iso settings and take a look at the image when does the when does the digital noise of high iso get in the way using your camera. More expensive cameras do better with low noise. And I'm not talking about sensor size. I mean uh, the top of the line APS-C from Canon and from Nikon, both of them, when you they use higher quality components, which reduces some of the digital noise. It's that analog to digital conversion that causes some of the noise. It's the heating inside on the sensor that causes some of that noise but the higher quality components actually reduce some of that. But every camera is different. And on this particular camera, I like to set this, I tell it don't go above 1600 ISO because I've looked at the ones at ISO 3200 and they're, they're really, uh, I'd never show a print of it to anybody. Now I could use it in an emergency, I could even go to 6400 or higher, but I don't like the quality of them at all. Now on my other camera, my D810, I can shoot at 6400 and get excellent results. It's just the nature of the beast. It's a, it's a more expensive camera. It does a better job in handling noise. So you need to determine that for your camera. What's, what's the upper limit for ISO under most conditions? And then turn auto ISO on, set the maximum limit. And what will happen is if I'm in aperture priority mode and I am setting too low or, or uh, uh, too small a lens opening or I want say I want to shoot at f16 instead of going below uh, a 60th of a second it starts to raise the ISO okay so it gives you it gives you that limit and it will show you it'll always tell you what ISO you're using but it does give you a little bit more control over um, the exposure that you're getting now the flip side of that is I will make sure that I turn this off and I set this at the actual absolute minimum uh, ISO setting for the camera, which is ISO 100. But I want to set that at ISO 100 and keep it there when I'm on a tripod. I don't care if it's a five second exposure and I want the highest image quality. So I'm going to control the ISO and I'm going to lock it down at the lowest base ISO that I can. But if I'm shooting sports or wildlife where I don't have control over the light, I don't have control over the, the shutter speed because I need to shoot at a faster shutter speed than normal to freeze action, that's when I'm going to use ISO to my advantage with a limit. I don't want it to go past 1600, but that will allow the camera to use those higher ISO settings to give you better exposures. Okay, auto ISO, give it a try uh, with those limits and see what the limit is for your pictures where you're satisfied with the image quality. Usually for APS-C cameras, usually it's 1600 or 3200 in that range uh, with full frame cameras. Generally speaking, 30, starting at 3200, sometimes 6400, but it's a personal preference for you. Where do you think that that image quality fall, really falls off the cliff? Okay. All right, next thing we're going to take a look at here, 
and that is in the um, autofocus mode. And this, find it here, the autofocus mode, this live view mode, and I've, I've been here multiple times and I wanted to read up on it, but this live view mode, this keeps the mirror open. Let me put it on the shooting here, okay? So this, come on camera. There we go. Okay. So this keeps the mirror open. And when I, I've got back button autofocus turned on here. So when I hit that autofocus button and it tries to focus, it's using uh, contrast detection, contrast, uh, the contrast system in the camera to find that focus. Now, newer Canon cameras have that dual pixel autofocus, does a great job. No question about it. Great system. Love it. However, uh, when you're looking through the viewfinder on a DSLR, the mirror is flipped up. Okay, right now we're looking, the light is hitting the sensor, it's showing us this live view. So with that mirror flipped up, the, auto, the real autofocus system, the really good fast autofocus system that's built into the camera is disabled. So it ha uses the backup contrast detection autofocusing and it does an okay job, but if I, if I move back out here so that it has to refocus it's hunting a little bit it eventually finds it but it takes a few seconds but if i go in and i change this from the live view mode to the quick mode watch what it does when when i try and autofocus it knows you've got that quick mode on and what it does is it slaps the mirror down which turns on that really good uh, phase detection autofocusing, and then it flips the mirror out of the way. But it has to use the, it has to get at that autofocusing system. The mirror shuts it off when you're in live view mode. So watch when I go to focus here. Get nice and close so it has to focus. When I hit the autofocus button, watch what happens. It shut the mirror up, or excuse me, it, it sh uh, shot the mirror down so that it turned on the autofocus system. It focused and then came right back, but it was almost instantaneous. So I'm gonna do it again. It's able to focus almost instantly and then it gets the mirror back so you have your live view back. That's real handy to know. Whether you can put up with that interruption or not, and again, if you're doing fast moving action, that mirror is gonna be going back and forth. But the, the autofocus system that it enables by doing that is much more accurate. It just gives you an interrupted display. Now, if you're, in, uh, if you're using the viewfinder, none of that matters because it's got access to that, that real high quality autofocus, that quick autofocus system all the time. It's only in the live view mode. And when you're in this, um, while we're in this ses session, let me talk, er, this section, let me talk for a second about this facial detection because this will look for faces to focus on. However, um, the auto, when you try and autofocus, you cannot get, it, it can only use the slower, less reliable autofocusing system. Okay. It, it doesn't flip the mirror up because it need, it's using this facial detection to try and find faces and it has to do it in live view mode. You can't do the quick autofocus. Um, and when you go to do the magnification, where you're pressing that upper right button, the one we talked about first, that upper right hand button, you get this message, the image cannot be magnified in live mode. Just the limitation of the camera. Maybe some newer cameras can do that, but that magnification is turned off. So if you like that, go into the menu, turn off facial detection. Again, it depends on what you're shooting. If you're not shooting people, turn that live mode or turn that facial detection off. I put it on quick mode because it's much more accurate. And now when I go to focus, sorry for the sl slow switch out here. When I go to focus, it focuses and I can also zoom in without a problem. Now I'm gonna stay zoomed in and hit the autofocus button and it stays magnified which is nice. So I can double check my focus and I get back where it's a nice blur again, autofocus, and it found focus very quickly. Okay. So that's just that, um, the autofocus system, some idiosyncrasies there, uh, facial detect turns off some of those, but that the, 
uh, quick autofocus, even though it flaps that mirror, is much more accurate. Okay? Um, let's just go here. Let me see. Okay. So if we go back to the menu here, I hope this is helping people with uh, understanding some of these controls, some of these menus that are kind of mysterious. I wish they'd do a better job in explaining them. Part of the problem is we have these very low resolution screens here. Sooner or later, they're gonna start putting high, high res OLED screens and instead of being a two and a half inch display, make it the full size of my phone. You know, the, the back of the camera is almost that big. Make make the whole back of the camera that display. Now I can have all kinds of information available to me. I know Samsung did that with I think it was their NX1. They had a full size display on the the entire back of the camera was a display. It was basically a, an iPhone or it was basically a Samsung phone with a camera built onto it. I really hope they they bring that back and do something to make it really usable but you think of the amount of smarts that are built into uh, f uh, cell phones now smartphones and if you took some of that intelligence and built it into the DSLRs you'd have a real winner and it obviously people are willing to pay for it because look at what they're charging for some of these cameras nowadays but that aside so uh, one thing I wanted to mention here when you come down here to silent shooting this silent shooting is not available in live view mode. It's really just, it's one of those things that's available when um, when you're shooting through the viewfinder and it does make it a little bit quieter. There are two, two types of uh, silent shooting. I'm gonna turn this one on. And because it doesn't work in live view mode, I'm gonna turn live view mode off. So I'm shooting through the viewfinder now. Let me just, switch back here okay so I'm shooting through the viewfinder now and I have silent mode one on so I'm gonna hold this up to the microphone listen to what it sounds like okay it's just slapping away so if I go into this menu again that's mode one if I put it on mode two and this is true of both Canon and Nikon I haven't heard a great difference between them but it does make some difference. It's not as, well, <laughs> what it does is it allows you to uh, shoot slower, if that helps. But it to me, it always seems just as loud. Supposedly, uh, it, it's quieter, but it, that's one of those menus that I prefer to just leave off. Uh, if you're really in a silent situation, that's where mirrorless cameras are really excellent. But this is one of those things that make sure you turn it off. It, it's just going to get in the way, and it really doesn't do a heck of a lot of good in actually making it silent. Okay? All righty. So let me just see what else is up on the... Here we go. Okay. So let's go into some of the menus now. And some of these menus can be just outright... Um, amazing and one of the things that I, I learned as I was researching this um, when you shoot you can tell it when I'm shooting with JPEG make my JPEG a certain aspect ratio so you can tell it to be 3 to 2 which is the native for these sensors 3 to 2 shape 4 to 3 or 16 to 9 or you can you could even do a 1 to 1 a square image and it only applies to the JPEG raw you get the full 3 by 2 image but it's something that you can play with. I guess if you shoot square all the time or you don't want to crop after the fact, but it only applies to the JPEG, but it's something that you can you can certainly take a look at and see if it's um, if it helps you at all. It, one of those interesting things. I don't see that on Nikon, but it's one of those things that you can uh, you can experiment with. You can also turn on two different grids, uh, uh, a uh, rule of thirds grid and then just a lots of lines grid this will help you sometimes when you're reviewing the um, looking at a horizon you put that grid up and it can actually help you level the horizon um, or you can turn it off completely okay the um, let's come over here I want to 
metering timer that's your own personal choice where you want to put that um, okay now okay um, on your camera let me come up here to there okay on your camera there is on this particular one there's a burst mode that allows me to um, change the drive so from high to high to single shot high speed or just uh, a slower continuous shot or the self timer modes these settings and this is something you have to get used to but i found that if i leave it on the high speed continuous i can shoot a single shot single press of the button a single shot or if i just hold it down i can do high speed continuous okay that lets me choose whether I want to do a single or a double, and I don't have to change any other buttons. I don't have to switch any dials. I can shoot high speed by just changing how long I press that the shutter release. That's a, a that's a big boon when you're going from shooting single shots to multiple shots. Every once in a while, you might take two when you meant to take one. Guess what? It's not film. Throw it out. Not a big deal. But that. Um, burst mode, use it for everything. Get that, put it on high speed continuous, get a feel for your shutter release and how, uh, when it switches from a single shot, how much of a delay there is before it starts shooting continuously. But leave it on high speed burst mode. That'll give you a little bit more flexibility. It's one less button you have to nuts with when you want to switch between one and the other. You just hold your finger down to shoot continuously at high speed. Okay. Um, Okay, also, when you are looking at your camera and you bring up, there we go, and you bring up the image review, let me switch over here, okay, so when you bring up the image review, come on, image review, there we go, so if I press image review, and this is a whole pile of pictures of my screen and my keyboard but hey what are we gonna do um, you can use that that scroll wheel to zoom through the pictures very very quickly okay you can also change what gets displayed on those pictures okay so I can change by using the again the info button on the back the info button I can display what information gets displayed for each picture here I have the blinkies on. This is the highlight, the loss of data warning. It's a visual warning. The, this won't show up in your actual JPEG. It's just telling you, the camera is saying, hey, th the details are clipped here. There's no data where it's flashing black. But I just press the info button to bring that up, and that shows you, gives you a, a hint that, hey, maybe I should change my exposure on this or do something so that if I want detail there, those blinkies will go away. And that really is the name for that feature, the, the blinkies. Uh, I can bring up this information, the shooting information, so I can tell that this shot was shot at a 30th of a second, 40th of a second. Um, what what ISO was shot, it was, it was shot at, and what number picture it is, five of 91 pictures, and whether I have exposure compensation on or not. Okay, so this is one of those things that, um, by pressing the info button, you bring up more and more information. And here you have the histogram. This is where I usually leave mine. And I'll have um, these features available so that when I'm looking, I want to look at the histogram, not the brightness of the exposure on the viewfinder, or excuse me, on the, the LCD. That LCD is not going to be very accurate. It never is. Uh, this histogram, once you figure out how to read a histogram, you can decide whether I need to retake this picture and change my exposure. Um, but the histogram is going to be an accurate representation, whereas the LCD, you can change the brightness of the LCD. You can tell it how bright to be or how not bright to be. So if I'm shoot, out shooting a Milky Way and I'm trying to keep things dark, I want to turn the brightness level of my LCD way, 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 way down so it's not blowing out my eyes at all. So even when I'm looking at a menu, it's not really, really bright. Sometimes when you're out in sunshine, 
you need to turn that LCD, the brightness of the LCD level up so you can actually see the menus. However, all of those changes are just making the backlight brighter or dimmer and that's going to change how your pictures look on it. The only real representation of what's accurate is going to be that histogram. So that histogram is going to be accurate along with the rest of the information. It'll tell you your shutter speed, your aperture, the date that you took it, whether it was shot in raw or large or whatever. But pressing that info display brings up these different amounts of information so that you can choose what you want to see. Okay? And a lot of times I'll rotate between this nothing on the display other than the image and this display so that I can check that histogram and see what it's looking like. Okay. All righty then. That's in the review module. Okay. So let's take a look at another menu option here. <clears throat> Come on down. All right. So. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so this is where this highlight alert, that's those blinkies. If you turn that off, then that will not show up when you do the, the display, when you press the info button. Turn that off, and that takes that one display out of it. Okay, I like them enabled. Same thing, the autofocus display, it will highlight what autofocus point was used when you shot. So you can tell if you're taking a picture of... Um, an owl, if you're if it's focused on the on its wing in the in the playback in the review, it will show you the focus point that was used and where you achieved focus. If it's on the wing, you know that the eyes are probably not going to be in focus. Okay, but it allows you to check and see that. I like to have that enabled so I can see what focus point was actually used. And same thing with the histogram. You can choose either brightness or RGB. The RGB histogram really doesn't do you any good. I've never seen any use for it ever. So that brightness or luminance histogram is the one you want to have there. Okay. All righty then. All right. So in the second tools menu, this is the one that you can actually change the brightness of the display up and down. And it doesn't reflect it in this image, but... In general, you want to make sure this is set in the middle. You don't want it too bright, you don't want it too dark, unless you're under those conditions where you need it dark or you need it light, like we talked about with the Milky Way or shooting out in sunshine. Okay? Alrighty then. Uh, ba -dum -ba -dum. These are the info display buttons, and I said, you know, like I said, you can turn those on or turn, turn them off. Um, I like having only that electronic level on so that that is always available. Okay, here's something that a lot of people are not aware of, and, and again, this is a personal preference, that these exposure level increments have to do with when I'm rolling the command dial, the, the um, front under your index finger on a Canon. When I'm rolling that, is every click going to be a half a stop, or is every click going to be a third of a stop? It's up to you. Do you want to have more finite control? Then put it on one-third stop settings. So you have to do three clicks with your finger in one direction or the other to get one full stop of exposure change. And that has to do with whether I'm in aperture priority mode or shutter priority mode. If I'm at one-third of a stop, then I have three stops, three clicks for every stop of, of uh, change. So if I want to, if I'm in shutter priority mode and I'm changing my shutter speed, I'm going to roll that three clicks and it will show three separate shutter speeds that I can choose. It gives you a little bit finer control. If I want to do it faster, then I can change this to a half stop. So two clicks will now give me a full f-stop of change. So two clicks per stop versus three clicks per stop. May not sound like a, a huge amount, but it also allows you to have finer increments of both shutter speed and aperture. So when I'm changing my aperture, I'll have three different apertures between stops. It divides it into three. Or shutter speeds, it'll give me more choices in shutter speed if I'm using a third of a stop for, for each click. Okay? 
We just wanted to clarify that. Alrighty, so in the next me menu, this is the same thing. I can change my ISO by either two, step, uh, two clicks or three clicks per stop. Same exact idea, it gives you a little bit more control. I can change my ISO by a third of a stop at a time or a half a stop at a time with each click. Depends on how you like to shoot, okay? ISO expansion, this is pretend voodoo science. They try and, and make it extra low and extra high. Worthless, turn that off. There's really no advantage to it. You can do the exact same thing in Lightroom or any other editing software. It doesn't actually affect your ISO. It just applies more amplification to it in order to show ridiculous ISO levels of 25,000 or whatever. There's some cameras that'll go up to a million ISO. Ludicrous, it doesn't really do anything. So turn that off, that, that one's really worthless. Bracketing, love this setting. This is not on Nikon. I would love to see this on every camera. I run into this every time I go bracketing, I gotta force myself to remember, turn bracketing off. It just happened last week. I was doing some moon shots and packed everything up, came home, went out the next day, took some flower shots, forgot to turn bracketing off. So I was getting nine shots, eight of which were incorrectly exposed. We all learn, don't we? This option allows you, or tells you, hey, when I physically turn the camera off, reset bracketing to nothing. Turn off that bracketing. Love this setting. Turn that on, that one is a lifesaver. No reason not to have that on, unless you're all you shoot is bracketing and you want it on in between sessions, that's fine. But love that setting, great idea to turn that one on. This bracketing sequence, this is one of those mystery menus. You gotta be kidding me. How little bit on the goofy side. What this is saying is when you're taking a three exposure or, or three or more bracketed exposures, with it setting right now in blue, it's going to have the correct exposure first, then it'll drop down to the negative exposure minus whatever your bracket is, and that's in your bracketing settings, but it'll do the negative one first, and then it'll do the positive. So you'll still get three pictures, but it'll be neutral, negative, and positive exposure compensation. The next setting, there we go. This setting means um, do the negative one first, do the neutral, the correct exposure in the middle, and do the positive overexposed uh, image third. Completely depending on how you want to see them, the effect is the same. It's just in what order do you want it to take those three different exposures. Uh, I like to have, and the, again, personal preference, I have mine set to that uh, where the correct exposure is actually first so that I can see the beginning of my bracketing is with the correct exposure, then it goes dark, and then it goes light. So if I'm taking four pictures, or excuse me, five pictures, it'll do the normal exposure, then it'll do two dark, minus one and minus two f-stops, and then it'll do two bright, one exposure overexposed, two, uh, two f-stops overexposed. So it depends on how you want to do it. it. It doesn't affect the images at all. It's just the, your, your, um, your workflow, how you want to manage your pictures. Okay, that's that bracketing exposure. Um, this safety shift, uh, I read up on this, and this is, is interesting, but I don't know how how accurate it is. Um, it it attempts to automatically compensate for quickly changing exposure. So if this is on, the exposure that you set, this is a lot, you're telling the camera, go ahead and override it if you think it's changing too fast. Well, how fast does it have to change for it to override the settings that you really want. To me, that's doesn't do you any good, so that should be disabled. Interesting idea, but I think it's it, it turns it more into going back to auto mode so you get a shot that maybe you didn't really want. Okay. Flash sync in AV mode, same thing. You can choose either uh, locked, at, locked at 1 250th of a second or it will automatically choose between 1 250th and 1 6th. 1 one sixtieth of a second. Okay, so th these custom functions on uh, Canon cameras, these are buried so deep, and as you saw in the beginning, 
it's kind of hard sometimes for me to find some of these because they're they're not all that logical. Uh, but we're going to go through some of these, and, and I've definitely some that you should have on, some that you should have off. This is one of those that if you do any long exposure or high ISO uh, imagery, especially, for instance, night photography, Milky Way photography, star photography, uh, this is one that you'll want to know how to turn on and turn off. This long exposure noise reduction attempts to remove the noise from the heating up of the sensor by, say, you do a 10 second exposure of uh, stars, it then shuts the, the shutter down and takes a second exposure of the exact same length and then subtracts out the noise that was present in the second exposure. Make sense? It, it, it's, a, um, it's a heat map of the sensor that it can then apply to the original photograph that allows it to come up with a lowered noise due to heat, a lowered noise image than if this was turned off. Whenever it says auto, you don't have any control over it, so you don't know if it's going to do it or not. I always avoid that. If you want to try getting a shot with this turned on, put it on and try it. Give it a shot. That's the low noise exposure, or excuse me, the long exposure noise reduction. Then there's high ISO noise reduction. Different type of noise. And again, this is the amplification that we talk about with ISO. ISO is nothing more than amplifying that signal. This attempts to reduce the noise caused by that amplification. And again, on your camera, try it, see how it works, see if it does a better job than not using it at all. Every camera is going to be different. They do have some effect, but whether or not it's, it's worth that extra, especially in, the, uh, in long exposure, if I'm taking a 30-second exposure, it's going to turn into a one-minute exposure for each time I press the shutter. So just be aware of that. It, there's a price to pay, and it's usually in time. Highlight tone priority, I always like to tell it, try and protect my highlights. So it will try and give a little bit more uh, protection to not blowing out your highlights, give you, giving you better detail in those highlights. If this is off, it doesn't try and correct anything. It just, if you want to clip those highlights, it lets you clip them. Okay. Um, that's all three of those. Then we have the autofocus. Um, when it can't find any uh, autofocusing points or anything to focus on, if it's just too dark, it will continue to hunt. If this is turned off, or if, he's, if this is um, on this blue setting, stop focus search, what it's going to do is is going to try to find focus and then just stop. If there's not enough light, it's not going to continue to hunt and pack for that focus. You can put it on continuous focus search and it will continue to try, but unless there's additional light added, it's not going to find focus. Once it, it tries, it's not going to find it. So I usually have this off. Um, autofocus select, I have this on. You can choose whether you want to, how you want this setting. Um, there's two sections. This auto selection, you can hit that upper right hand uh, autofocus button and the camera automatically lights up every autofocus point and uses anything that it can focus on under any one of those points. In this particular camera, I believe there's 12 autofocus points. I don't like turning over control of that over, over those autofocus points. The camera doesn't know what I'm trying to focus on. So anytime it says auto selection, <coughs> nix that, doesn't do it, doesn't do it for me. So I'll go in here and I set this on activate autofocus select so if i want to hit i'll hit that button and now it lets me use the command dial underneath my index finger to roll through any of the different autofocus points i can also use the command dial on the back i can use the multi-selector dial to manually choose an autofocus point so with this selected i can i can hit this button that autofocus um activation and then I can use the command dial to choose the autofocus uh, point that I want or the uh, multi-controller to choose the autofocus point that I want. I prefer this. It makes a lot more sense. Okay. Uh, the superimposed display I have on that dis helps you to display some of the information that is available um, on the um, 
on the on the LCD, including the info display button. If that's turned off, then nothing's going to display. Nothing's going to be superimposed either on the internal viewfinder or on the LCD. Okay. Alrighty. So this is an interesting thing because there's an uh, autofocus. Uh, there's an autofocus light right here that will allow you to, um, it can either generate an infrared beam that nobody can see, or it can actually turn into a mini flash that is like a little tiny flashlight that helps it to try and focus. Uh, that when you're trying to take a picture of somebody, there's a light shining in their eye now. Uh, doesn't really do any good. Um, use the IR autofocus assist beam only then it's one of those things that is going to be able to um, help you with autofocus and it's going to be able to do that without any problem. Okay, coming up to the end here. Mirror lockup, that's where you actually lock the mirror up if you want to. Um, and that's all for that. The operations, this, and notice there's five different menus under each one of these custom menus. It, it, there's there's 20 or 30 additional functions in this custom menu section that unless you go through it there's some stuff that you're missing on your camera uh, here's how you turn on back button focus for your camera uh, at least on this particular Canon there are, it may I, I noticed the Canon depend I probably had my hands on 20 or 30 different Canon cameras and every single one of them the menus are set up differently they, they take some things from the function menu and they put it into the, the main menu. They take things from the quick, uh, the quick button. They don't even include the quick button. And I know it evolves over time, but there is very, so little consistency, it, it's astounding. And it makes it a little harder to learn when you're going from one camera to another. However, on, if you want to turn on back button focus, you can come in here and you can tell it, of these five options, how do you want that back button? Excuse me, there are 10 options here. Uh, how do you want it to be set up? And this is pointing at those two buttons. How do you want that button to um, react? You want the shutter, the shutter button to act like your autofocus start and take a picture, or do you want to use back button focus? If you want to use back button focus, then it's this option two that you want to set it on that allows you to have metering start when I touch the shutter release that turns on the meter only however got rid of my menu because I pressed the shutter um, however if I want to be able to focus I use that the back button that that one there on the bot on the back left of the camera that lets me use that for my focus and it breaks the link between the shutter and the autofocus system now i have to press a second button with my thumb but that lets me decide when i want to focus and when i don't want to focus it's not mandatory by putting it underneath your shutter finger okay so that option two is the one that you're going to use the most um, that turns on turns the metering on the Shutter release and the AF on is the button that is used for that auto metering or the auto focusing. Okay. And then this, you can decide what that set button does. I have it set so that it turns on the, uh, uh, the artificial horizon on the back of the camera. You can have it so that it also sets your ISO uh, each of these, I, I no idea why you'd want to be changing these in the middle of a session. The only one that I found uh, would have good access to having quick access to that button is this set viewfinder for that horizon leveling. Uh, this tells you how you're going to move this dial. You can reverse whether pushing it to the left reduces the uh, either shutter speed or aperture or pulling it to the right increases it or reversing that that's that's all that is doesn't do much good there okay this image verification data you'd have to read up on this but what it does is that i believe it tags your image in the exif data uh, it tags your image with the serial number of this camera 
and it allows it to um, positively identify it as coming from this camera. It helps it to verify the image if there's any kind of a copyright issue down the road. How well it works, I've never seen this on any other camera, so it's a, a, a kind of a Canon only thing, but turn it on, it doesn't hurt anything by having it on, it may help you down the road, okay? That's all the custom functions. If you want to get rid of all those and turn them back into the defaults, hit that. It'll wipe out everything we just did for the last hour, but <laughs> we don't want to do that right now. Okay, so that's that. Okay, let me switch back here. Okay, and the last thing that I want to go over, and we talked about the histogram that's available on the back of the camera. Um, and if you're not aware of, of histograms, uh, far left-hand side is pure black, far right-hand side is pure white. Ideally, you want the majority of your information usually in the midpoint of the histogram. So, for instance, if I take a series of three photographs, this one is overexposed by a couple stops, this one is underexposed by a couple stops, and if you look at the histogram in the top corner, you can see it's jammed over to the right because there's a way too much white information. This is jammed over to the left, way too much dark information, shadow and, and black detail. This one is properly exposed. It's got the majority of its information in the midsection. That helps uh, preserve those shadow details and the highlight details and everything from pure black to pure white is, is involved in that picture. So. Use the histogram to your advantage. Check it. Look at it based on um, how it is displayed. You want, in most cases, unless you're doing something like uh, highlight, uh, excuse me, high key photography or low key photography, then a lot of times you want to make sure that you've got the majority of your information in that center section, um, so that you've got a good display of all of your um, uh, all of your midtones and your shadow detail. Now, last thing, little bonus section here I want to talk about. We did this with Nikon last week. There is, uh, Canon has a picture style editor, and it allows you to change your picture styles. And what are picture styles? Let's take a look here. So if we go to the menus on this, and we go up here to the shooting menu, the shooting menu, the second shooting menu, this picture style, right now this is set at neutral. And this has to do with the, the amount of sharpness that's applied and obviously um, all of this is applied to the JPEG only. The information is saved in the raw file but it's applied to the JPEG. You can ignore completely ignore this information when you're talking about processing raw file. But uh, it does save that so that if you want to see, you want to match your raw pet, your raw to the JPEG, uh, it will obey these settings. So I can choose portrait, standard, standard portrait, uh, landscape neutral, and it has different settings between the midtones and the color balance and the sharpness applied and all that. Uh, these are the ones that come with it. You on this particular camera, you can add three other ones, and you can download these from. Uh, a website I'll put up on the screen here, but they are there are some downloadable ones. One called Nostalgia, one called Clear, uh, Twilight, Emerald, Autumn Hues, which you see here, and then a Studio Portrait and a Studio or a Snapshot Portrait. I have and a, this Video X, which matches a particular picture style, but these are predetermined picture styles that I can go in and this enhances autumnal hues, fall fall pictures. Worth at least trying that and see how it looks compared to the standard or the neutral picture style. Uh, this portrait studio enhances flesh tones. It doesn't change the saturation, but it just enhances the flesh tones. It um, expresses, uh, their description is it expresses a translucent skin in smooth tones worth trying. Uh, but these you can download. There's instructions at this link. Uh, I'll I'll post this whole thing uh, up on the website. Uh, by tomorrow you'll see it up on the Facebook page. But this allows you to not only download those but use the, uh, the 
EOS utility to copy these to your camera. Once you hook your camera up with a USB cable, the EOS utility will download whichever ones you tag into the camera so you can use them. And I have three of them. Uh, different cameras have different numbers of them that you can use, but um, try them. See, see how you like them. It's the kind of thing that um, you may find that eh, it, it gives you the, the look that you want. Okay, so <clears throat> that's about it for now. I want to thank you all for showing up. And if you're watching this, uh, if you have any questions or if I got something drastically wrong, please feel free to leave a comment and I'll be happy to correct it in a later, later one. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what we're going to do next week, next Tuesday, but we'll have a fun tutorial for you. And until then, feel free to... Um, Feel free to jump on and do some shots of both flowers and um, mayflowers and flowing waters. Feel free to submit a picture. Use the hashtag Arsenal and you'll be able to possibly win one of these Arsenal controllers. Okay, thank you all very much. Thanks for coming. I hope to see you soon. Take care. Stay safe.